Welcome to White Knight. This is an adventure horror game set in the 1930s and made by Awesome Studio. I've played it for about five minutes so far and I really like what I've seen, so I'm really excited to jump into it. If you'd like to play it for yourself, you can grab it from Steam and I'll have a link to that in the description. Let's begin. Some nights are just pitch black, without stars, and without sleep. Dirty nights clinging to you like tar. Like this one night, back in 1938. Boston. The Great Depression tsunami was just sweeping over what was left of America. Misery. Hunger. Despair. Times are hard, they said. Times were worse than hard. And the bar was about to close. As far as I was concerned, this was just another intoxicated day drawing to an end. If only I knew. The shock was still echoing in my bones, as the image of that girl coming out of nowhere surged back in my mind. Did I hit her? Was she dead? I couldn't remember. Thoughts were spinning in my head. I hope I didn't run her over. I hope she's still alive. Then, 
the pain, the terrible pain on my side. And this question, where am I? car was on the brink of death. I think he's on the brink of death, too. Yeah, I really like the art style. It's like this super high contrast, black and white. But there's also, there's also some outlining going on, too. And the game also uses fixed camera angles. This girl on the road. The impact. I couldn't find her body. Yeah, the woman, she looked like a... she looked like a ghost. Which makes me feel... this whole game feels as if I've entered some sort of a dream world. The box seemed to be connected to the electric lighting of the street. I think it just did something, but I'm not quite sure what. No body. No blood. Where did the girl disappear? I don't think he ever hit her. I don't think she was real. Yeah, so there's a... Seems to be some sort of a journal system that's like a... Kind of like a newspaper. Which is kind of interesting, although the thought of my personal journal being the Boston Daily News is kind of amusing. I really hope my personal journal doesn't get published in the newspaper. It's kind of an invasion of privacy, don't you think? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, who's that girl that crossed the road? I couldn't avoid her, but I never found her body. I couldn't get her desperate stare out of my mind. But I was wounded, and I needed help. Hold on, can I check the mailbox? Vesper Manor. Didn't ring a bell. My head was empty and painful. trying to collect my thoughts, but the intense pain was scattering them like a bunch of dead birds. My fear of being wounded changed into an obsession. Was I about to die? It really does feel like I've entered a nightmare or something. A for sale sign. The arm came from a marble structure. I guess it's an arm on the ground. I can barely see it. Oh wait, I meant to go up the stairs. I'm going behind them. <laughs> These are the, the perils of fixed camera angles. I really need to find some bandages or something. Here we go. I probably have broken ribs and stuff. There's a wine glass. 
There was still some golden liquid inside the glass. I should probably knock on the door, because, you know, I'm probably bleeding to death, but... It's a video game, so I'm just going to collect stuff. Letter from Martha Kenton to William Vesper. And this is the Vesper Manor, right? So this must be to the person who... One of the people that live here, lives here? Under normal circumstances, I would have never tried to contact you. I am an honest woman. I have supported my husband since the blessed day of our wedding, from which two beautiful children were born. I have given them the best education I could, but today, I cannot afford to raise them properly anymore. We're ruined. My husband's employer went bankrupt. He is traveling from town to town, trying to find a job, while I have to bake for food every single day. My four years old son has had a bad cough, which is getting worse, and I fear for his life. Nowadays, we can see children die in the streets. Is this still America? I beg of you, who are rich, only a few dollars would be enough. We could work for you. We live in the shack under the best oil sign at the entrance of the slum, by the Graham Slaughterhouses. Don't hesitate to come. Martha Kenton. Yes, yeah, so this is set during the Depression. So there's a lot of people that are out of work and just trying to eat. And I would say the people that live here are rich, but it does say for sale, so... I don't know, maybe they're not doing too well either. Looks like there's an... Is that an onk symbol? Or however you pronounce that, on the tree? I think it's Egyptian, that symbol. Anyway, let's knock on the door, see if we can get some help. landlord was out, so the key might be around somewhere. No one around. I was all alone, with my pain growing and some nausea starting up. Don't stop. Think quick. Think well. It was just an accident. It happens. The girl must have made it out alive. I had to make it out alive, too. Maybe the girl lived, but you're dead. And that's why it seems like a dream. Perhaps I'm a spirit. <gasps> no, I have no idea. Couldn't see a thing. The window was watching over a tomb. No lights on inside. Old and damp planks, which had fallen from the front of the mansion. Yeah, this place is for sale, seems to be in disrepair. This place is not what it once was. Let's stumble on out here and try not to bleed all over everything, looking for the key. Let's go check out the well over here in the tree, too. For sale. This board looked as old as the house. Yeah, you know what? I guess if you tried to sell property during the Great Depression, who the hell would buy it? So many people didn't have any money. I hope there wasn't anything useful inside. It was quite a drop. I don't have to go down there, do I? Yeah, I really hope there isn't. This unknown symbol lit out a powerful aura. Aura. I don't think there's anything back here, but let me see if I can go around the back of the house. Nope. 
there's a certain mood that I get from this game that I really like. It's hard to describe, but it's the feeling where you, I feel like I'm stuck inside of a, like a bubble universe. Where it feels like the atmosphere is kind of oppressive. Like there's, there's no way out and I'm just constrained in this small place. It's hard to explain, but it's very good for a horror, a horror themed game. It feels like I'm trapped inside of the atmosphere, if that makes any sense. No key here. <laughs> Why would there be a key in the fountain, or whatever that is? Whoa, wait, this is... this is a graveyard. Is this all the members of the Vesper family that have died here? There's always a spare key somewhere around these old places. Mm -hmm. Margaret Vesper born... born Venter... Venter Cross. I guess the Vesper family has lived here for a very long time. B. Norman. This name coming from nowhere was chilling. Yeah, not a member of the Vesper family. The statue was staring at me with a white and hostile stare. Wasn't there an arm that came from a, a statue? Is it missing an arm? Not that I could just like glue it back on or something, but the statue had been moved recently. Hmm. And what does that mean? Moving a statue must be quite difficult. The key was probably hidden nearby. Henry Vesper, a relative of the landlord. Check that one out. Okay, let's go back to the uh, statue's arm. And what do you bet I'm gonna suffer the first? Uh, gonna suffer the curse of not being able to solve the first puzzle in adventure games. What do you bet? What do you bet it'll take me two hours to find the damn key? Don't worry, if it takes that long, I'm gonna cut it out. Yeah, so the statue's been moved recently. I don't see that how that helps me. I do want to check out the statue's arm. arm came from a marble structure, but there was no key in sight. Hmm. It's gotta be somewhere around the statue, right? Vesper, no date on the grave. Alright, let's take a look at this and see if this helps. I couldn't help but think about the statue's broken arm. Someone had obviously moved it recently, but I couldn't help thinking it was some kind of desecration. What is this? Is this an ad for beer? You may love it, you may hate it, or you may have never drunk a beer. Did you know the cost of all the new jobs in the Civilian Conservation Corps program from Roosevelt's New Deal could be covered just by the taxes on beer? Over $328 million. 
Taxes on beer amount to almost $1 million per day. A beer means over 1 million jobs for you, your neighbors, or your friends. Beer producers know they offer well-being, but they also want beer to be safe for everyone. Enjoy with moderation. And the future, yours like ours, always will be prosperous. Beer is your product, and it's your future. Um, sure, beer is the future, yes. The bucket fell down a dozen meters at least, no way to recover it. Thinking this was a premonition was probably just superstition, but I felt definitely uneasy. Yeah. No real clues in here that I didn't already think of. On the grave, the name Margaret Vesper seemed to challenge eternity itself. Who was she? The grave looked as daunting as a forgotten tomb. What a dire way of decorating a garden. Seems to be it. I mean, can I take the shovel? Like, I feel like I should be able to dig something up, but I don't think that was an option. No, it just says it's been moved recently. Seems like it doesn't want to take the shovel. Okay, so I'm probably just uh, missing a hotspot. Wait. I noticed footprints. Someone often went to the cemetery. That doesn't help me. Unless there's something over this way? It's hard to tell because of the visual style. No, I think you're just meant to stay in the kind of white areas and anywhere where it's like completely black you're not meant to go. Yeah, so I think I'm just missing a hotspot, so uh, I'm going to go find the missing hotspot and I'll be right back. A metallic shard in the dark caught my attention. Oh, wait, what? Oh, okay. I don't even see the metallic shard. Would you like to do something with the metallic shard? Or do you just want to stare at it? Okay, you can just stare at it, that's fine. Um, what? Oh, I can actually push the statue back over. Can I really? Is it that easy to move a statue? Doesn't this thing weigh like two tons? Isn't it made of marble? Especially being in as much pain as I thought I was, I didn't think I'd be able to even move that. I never even considered it. Okay, so the shard in the darkness is a key? Interesting. Okay, that's strange. So, this game seems to have some weird logic, I guess. Some kind of dream logic that I need to get used to. Because there's obviously no reason why he couldn't reach out to the shard in the darkness before to see what it was. There's no reason I had to move the shadow away from it to see it. Except that that seems to be the internal logic of the game, so I'm going to have to adapt that into my mind. If it's in the darkness, my character won't touch it. Twisted, but the dead probably kept burglars away. I had the feeling I was about to desecrate a sanctuary. To open the door to a world I didn't belong to. But whoever lived in there, they would understand. I needed help. Anyone would understand that. somewhere safe. That's all that mattered. As the doors opened, the mansion seemed to react to my presence. There was a smell, like a cornered animal, and the smell of fear. And yet, I entered the place, because I had no choice. 
was praying to find a phone or some help. I didn't even bother wondering what happened to prayers when they reached the wrong door. Oh my god. I love the art direction in this game. This is wonderful. Hello. Hello. I need an ambulance. Can you hear me? I need help. What had happened? This cold. The darkness around me. I was usually not afraid of the dark. But there, on that day, I remembered I had a matchbox somewhere in my jacket. The urge to light a match was growing with every new chill running down my spine. Box of matches. I could get some light using return B. Six out of twelve, okay. So they're consumables, I'm assuming? Whoa. Was that her? The spirit? This art style is so good. It's like the mansion itself is alive. I wonder how long these matches last for. Who answered? I couldn't forget that sound. It almost sounded like it was me who answered. Like, who was this? Oh my god, no, no. As if I just talked to myself in another dimension or something. That woman with dark hair was dominating the room. Who was she? Maybe the person I almost ran over? Some African mask. A wooden face without a soul. More matches? Yes. I was hoping to find more, but I had to make do with what I had. A peaceful landscape. The kind of place I would have loved to be. The hell is that noise? God, I feel like every time I light one up, there's gonna be something behind me. Jesus. I think maybe that sound indicated it was about to burn down. The shovel is covered with fresh soil. Yeah, somebody's been digging. And there are footsteps all over the place. Like dirty footsteps coming into this mansion. Perhaps one of the graves was rather fresh. Couldn't open it, it was no use. A hat. A man was living here. Whoever lived here had a special taste for alcohol. Well, alcohol is the future, according to the Boston newspaper. The Boston Daily News. Yeah, so I don't think I need to actually look at the diary unless I'm kind of stuck, because it just kind of gives me hints, I think. Yeah. I'm guessing the door's locked behind me. Mm-hmm. Locked. No matter. I needed help, and it was in here. This mountain landscape couldn't soothe me. Oh. Hey! So this place actually has power. I'm very surprised. Good to know. Should look for a light switch first, so I don't have to use too many matches. Two men on a small boat. A memory from an expedition? 
encyclopedias. The edge was hardly readable. Couldn't go through there. I really need to find medical help. I'm so slow. Locked. Of course. And no way to know what was waiting behind it. And the light, of course, only reaches... Not quite to the end of the room. Hey, what about these boots? Boots have been used very recently. Armchair looked comfy. I could get some rest and save my progress. Oh. Right, I guess there must be a save system. Are you there? As I woke up, I had recovered some strength. I could run. Oh. Do I walk around normally now? Mmm, not quite. But I can definitely move a lot faster. Alright, cool. And are you there? Who is speaking to me? Maybe I am actually the one that's dead or near death. And that's somebody speaking me speaking to me from the waking world. Whoa. was it? Or what was it? In my world, women didn't glow like the moon. And they didn't walk through doors either. I had to be more badly wounded than I thought. Was it the glow of the accident I was seeing there? Wait, what's the thing that popped up? Margaret. Oh, do I actually need the light to be able to uh, pick up whatever's here? Wait, what the heck? Margaret's diary excerpt 11. August 20 uh August 21st, 1911. Suffocating in its useless illuminations and frills, the mansion doesn't have the the greatness befitting a fortune like the Vespers. It's the work of a degenerate romantic. It's like a stain in this century. I ordered the flower beds on the east side of the garden to be removed. They made moving around complicated, and in summer, their scent was unbearable. I didn't talk about it to Henry, and he was quite upset. For the first time, I think I saw something like rage in his eyes. For a few seconds, he did look like a man. And then he shut himself back in his melancholy and played the piano all afternoon. His jazz again, this stupid music which reeks of debauchery and misery. For the first time, I think I saw something like rage in his eyes. For a few seconds, he did look, he did look like a man, but then he shut himself back in his melancholy. For a few seconds, he looked like a man. So it sounds like she doesn't, she's like disgusted with what he's become. Shutting himself away. And it's only when he was when he looked enraged that she thought he was a man. Hmm. Well, let's use my uh, match for the darkness while I've still got it. Whoever that was, it currently didn't ring a bell. More matches. There we go. Oh, up to twelve. Excellent. Vesper, the landlords for sure, but not a very smiling couple. Nothing special about that wardrobe. 
The crucifix was not comforting at all. The library. Margaret's Diary Excerpt 12. August 28th, 1911. William is seven today. He is with Henry, running after the servants in the garden, dressed up like monsters from space. Games. Always games. The mansion is all upside down and their yells gave me an awful headache. I'm now cloistered in the office, unable to even pray. Henry's fantasies keep William away from his great destiny. I have to bring him back to me, as this will be my only chance to make a man out of him, to make him embrace the Venter Cross legacy, to show him the way. Henry is a dreamer, and he has no ambition whatsoever. He can't teach him anything. Behind every great man, there's a great woman. Nonsense. Women should be on the front line. This is where the opposite brought us. I have no illusion about how little power the world is leaving in the hands of women. But William is young. He is the future. I will act through him. And may night finally fall upon this house. May William stop running after deceiving lights to find the place he deserves in this world. To make him embrace the Ventercross legacy. Yeah, she really did not like him. She really did not like Henry. Wanted to push William to be a true man, whatever that means. I'm assuming that means somebody who's very rich and owns a lot of stuff. A boy with religious dress. A house full of old traditions. Is that William? Seeing the woman with a church candle, I was wondering where God was. Probably not in this place. Box full of old science books. Sounds like Henry's stuff. Sounds like he was a, a bit of a reader. Garden looked like it was sleeping in the darkness. Wait, there's something here. Comes Darkness. October 29th, 1938. The time came when we stopped counting. We stopped counting how many companies closed in the past nine years. How many unemployed and unemployed and families ended up in the streets. Forced to live in slums around our cities. We stopped counting all the commodities wasted because nobody could buy them. Thrown to the sea or burnt. We stopped counting how many of our business partners fell with us. It was nine years ago, on October 29th, 1929. Born from the sick and speculative belly of America. The crash would throw the world into the storm and darkness. We are still here. But we lost faith. And we stopped counting. Because these were just figures. Because today, they make us feel nauseous. Dawn seemed far at that time. And today, some think they can see the sun rise. They seem to forget night and darkness are always out there. Somewhere. All right, let's save again and then go into the library. Guess we're not going that way. Was there another door in here? No, I think that's it. Oh, wait a minute. More matches? Oh, I see. There's three left there, and you just fill up to the maximum amount that you can hold. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think there's another door here. Yep. Wait, no, it's not there. Or was it? Here it is. Wait, that's not a door. Uh. The 
lights on a timer. Oh, did a ghost turn it off? Please turn it back on. This was locked, right? And this was t wait. Uh, what the hell? And my light goes out at the same time. Okay. I don't find either of these doors inviting. Oh, there's something behind me. Sheet music was taken away from that glass case. Probably Henry's again, he'd like to play jazz. Note to self armchairs. I am so tired. My father ordered several leather club chairs from a Quincy craftsman. They are perfect. It was one of the few places where I can rest and think. Margaret wouldn't touch them, and I have no idea why. Maybe because they are marked with a sun, which made her blind. I don't know. I'm just happy they're here. Thank you, Father. Margaret wouldn't touch them because they're marked with a sun? What? An original copy of Debussy's Claire de Lune? Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Or at least passably. Ah, uh, I need a key, right? Wait, what? I could look around and I was still free to act. Oh, okay. Box was closed. There was a small opening for a key. That symbol. The box lid was displaying an esoteric symbol. Is that the same symbol that was on the tree outside? Not that it really matters, because I can't even go outside again anyway, because the doors are locked. Alright, well there's nothing I can do here without a key or something, I think. Some books on the ground. Can't really read them. Yeah, nothing to do here. William Vesper's Diary, Excerpt 10. Oh my god, there's a lot of diary entries. Look at that. It says 1 of 25. July 3rd, 1929. I watched them from behind the vapors of my whiskey. Drunk men and women who bark at each other like animals. They grab and bite each other in a preposterous parade that seems to arouse them. I am outraged. And yet, I am jealous of their foolishness. Their ability to just forget everything in this game. Then, there's the lovers, leaning and whispering to each other amidst that chaos, confident that their words would find their way to the mind of their significant other. I dream of being in his place, drinking in her words. What could she say to me? What would I answer? Would I tell her I love her? Maybe I wouldn't say a word. Maybe I would hit her. I could be her son. I could be the son of all women. What? What the f- William. William's the son, right? And in that, um, excerpt from her, her diary, he was like seven years old or something, right? So this must be much, much later. I'm not sure what the date was before, but now it's 1929. So this must be when he's grown up. 
And she did want to condition him to be a real man, whatever the hell that means. Maybe it screwed him up, because these are some disturbing thoughts. Maybe I would hit her? Maybe I could be the son of all women? What the hell does that even mean? I remember the smell. Cold tobacco. Fresh enough to fill the room. Oh, already saw that. The window had no handle. A very unhelpful peculiarity. Hello. The gramophone could only play silent dust. Whoa. I decided to accept her presence. After all, from all those weird things I had seen that night, she was the only one who hadn't tried to kill me. Yeah, she seems friendly. I mean, it seems like she wants help. I like that. Could only play Silent Dust. Oh, it happens every time I look at it? Actually, she didn't even seem to see me. She was waiting for something. But what? Well, it looks like she's on a stage with a microphone. It looks like she's waiting to sing. Maybe I need to find a record and play it. From Selena to William, Excerpt 1. Dearest William, you wanted to know more about me. Last time, I didn't tell you everything. This letter will make up for this. When I arrive in California in 1930, I'm only 18. This is a marvelous place, and the weather is so nice. I spend hours on the beach, astonished to see how brown my Norwegian skin can become. In the evening, I hang near the jazz clubs. In the afternoon, I watch people play on the beach, humming the tunes I heard the night before. Sometimes I try to sing louder than the waves. That's a good exercise. My English is quickly improving, thanks to the American songs I already know in Oslo. At that time, I'm barely aware of the social misery that is devouring your country. I am young. I want to be beautiful, to meet people my age, and to sing. In Los Angeles, at the Spice Club, I meet the members of a jazz band. They're talented and funny. We play all night. I forget about the hour and about my parents. They even call the police. At the end of the night, the musicians tell me they're looking for a singer and that they want me. I can hardly believe it. Have you ever felt that you finally belonged somewhere? It feels fantastic. Okay, so the, I think the woman I'm seeing is Selena then. Because it seems like she wants to sing, and this is talking about yeah, Selena saying that she's, she's a singer. From Selena to William. So it sounds like Selena was somehow knew William and they were thinking about getting together, but married, boyfriend, girlfriend, something like that. Romantic interest, it sounds like. Which is very bad for Selena because I think William might be messed up from his mother. What in the hell? That did not this look like Selena. I like it was reaching out from some fairy tale. The kind of stories in which kids get devoured by some witch in a dark forest. Was it real? Delusion or not, I tried not to think about it. Only a madman can think mad things. William Vesper's Diary, Excerpt 12, February 6th, 1932. Of all the bars I visited, 
The smoke and mirrors appears to have been especially tailored for me. People there are quiet. Melancholic, even. They stagnate in the swirling smoke of their cigarettes, like convicts, desperate victims that were pushed to the darkness by the crisis. But even if the bar is an elegant place, they are not driven away. They respect their right to oblivion. It is a place where they can disappear. I found myself a corner from which I can watch their comings and goings until I am carried to the abyss by my own whiskey. Every time, I am caught again by the band. Such good musicians. Their music is like a tear that time stretches. A slow jazz, steady and reserved. It is the music of their time, the music of those who fell on the wayside. Someone told me about a singer who just got hired. Well, I don't think the band needs that, but we will see. Okay, so it sounds like he met Selena by going to this place and hearing the musicians, and she became the singer for the band. It sounds like that's how they met. That is not the door I came from, is it? There's barely any humanity left in that man's stare. This portrait of a woman has been cut with a knife. Ugh. A harbor. Empty boats on water. Wait, is there a newspaper on the ground? No, there is. An appointment with Destiny 2. Oh, this is from Franklin Roosevelt. These economic royalists complain that we seek to overthrow the institutions of America. What they really complain of is that we seek to take away their power. Our allegiance to American institutions requires the overthrow of this kind of power. In vain they seek to hide behind the flag and the Constitution. In their blindness, they forget what the flag and the Constitution stand for. Now, as always, they stand for democracy not tyranny, for freedom, not subjection, and against a dictatorship by mob rule and the overprivileged alike. Okay, well, I think I'll end this episode here before it becomes over an hour long. So, so far, this is really good. This is really, really good. It has an intoxicating atmosphere. I love the, the art style. It's got some really good sound design, too. I'm mean, just listening to that clock. The thunder outside. The ominous clock. Tick. Yeah, it's really, really good. And I'm actually intrigued by the story. There's a lot of notes. The, the density of journal entries and newspaper clippings and stuff is pretty high. Which could very easily become um, kind of boring and tiresome, and I maybe would feel like I should skip all of them, but so far I'm actually really into the story, and I'm, I'm really curious what's going on. Ugh. I don't like that noise. So yeah, I'm really intrigued so far. This is very good. So, I hope you have enjoyed it as well, and I will definitely be back soon.